this week on IFBB AMA podcast. You can see that that weight is put on a quad. The the tempo, I mean, he didn't rush it and blast it and lift the weight. That's something I try to express to everybody. You can squat in many ways. The movement isn't the same. You have to be very specific with how you do it. And you have to tell yourself, what do I want from this movement? It's how you place tension through those quads and don't allow the whole body to become the moving factor, you know? You know, I understand when people say the argument against squats for hypertrophy, you have to control and balance the weight in the fatigue setting. You have to make sure your mechanics are correct as increased risk of injury i get it however i do believe a lot of that does come from people squatting too heavy for what they're actually able to do by keeping it on the quads on this episode of ama podcast of chris and milos we caught up with Big James since working with Milos. He's been cranking that protein intake and getting up in body weight. Now he's sitting at a 305 pounds in the best condition he has been to date. As many of you seen in his most recent guest posing pictures, you can see that James is looking very, very big, looking perfect for his upcoming spots at the Arnold USA and Arnold UK in the springtime. We discussed protein intake and some strategies to utilize to get that protein intake on a regular basis. And it really comes down to the know-how and obviously not so much going the convenience route and what's easier. And then, of course, the big squat discussion. Squats. You get one group that says that squats are not the best hypertrophy exercise. And then, of course, you have the other old school thought that squat is still the superior leg exercise for lower body growth. Great conversation. Easy flowing. Check it out. James, what's going on, buddy? Hello, brother. How are you doing? I have to say, you've been looking incredibly huge. You know, somebody somebody put it there like 320. Like, oh, shit. I mean... Okay, that's right. a little bit not realistic, right? <laughs> wait, are you 320 right now? Yeah, no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. You'll hear the story. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Milos, Milos yeah, explain. That, uh, sorry, right. You know, because, listen, again, as much as I appreciate, he looked great in that uh, uh, guest posing. I mean, uh, two wow. round, Jesus Christ, yeah, and, and fairly lean. But th- then when I put it together, like uh, 320, th- that might be a little bit a stretch. And then James told me that the guy <laughs> just wanted to pump it up. Yeah, it is. Yeah, we have a good friend in the industry, our friend uh, AJ, who does a lot of like the kind of promotion of the bodybuilding, and he's a bit of a hype man, like a kind of like someone from wrestling, and you know he likes to he inflated the numbers a little bit, and I can be really honest with you, I'm about three oh five at the minute, so he added fifteen pounds, which is excessive. Yeah. You guys can see that, right? Yeah, we can see. Yeah, that. that's beautiful. Oh yeah. my gosh, James, I've never seen you that full before. Um, and, and I mean, overall, is this the best condition you've been at at 305? I think at that kind of weight, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Like, oh I was even God. surprised after I shaved for the guest pose and then went on stage and then saw the pictures and the videos after. I was like, okay, I don't look too bad because I was nervous, of course. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was nervous to do it anyway. So, yeah, I was quite happy with that. No, but no. You, the greatest thing about that is when you stayed with me, you were what, 280? Yeah, I was probably about 280. Well, listen, I mean, uh, uh, we all know muscle memory, uh, the type of training that he does, persistency and consistency <laughs> of his dieting and everything, right? So you know that uh, once he gets structured and pushes to the limit, this is what's going to be happening. And still, as as much as I love this, I mean, it's a new, beautiful progress. I so said, can we push a little bit more? I don't know, Chris, you wouldn't know. And even James doesn't know, right? It's the only uh, one way to find out. So... Everything is working perfectly. Body is responding. Okay. Oh my gosh! I have so many questions. Yeah, First off, go ahead. look at those freaking quads. Yeah, man, <laughs> that's out of control. Well, do you know what? That's why I laughed because um, Nate Spears said something. He's like, he's a friend, and he was like, "Legs look crazy, man." I went, "Oh wow, squats must work." Because you know, mm-hmm. everyone's trying to reinvent the wheel, and I do get a lot of people like even commenting saying, "Why do you squat?" Like, but it's because I know, I know if you squat properly. They're very hard to beat in regards to what they give back. So yeah, don't get me wrong, I, I do all the other stuff. I do a lot of extensions. I do lots of isolation reps on loads of other stuff. The work. This is at the end of my workout after I do a lot of other stuff. Hold on a second. It, what do you mean it, by at the end? What did you do after, before this? Extensions, line curls, seated curls, adductor, calves, all the other stuff. And then I save the squat till the end because the way I like it is when my legs are already a little bit tired, they feel better for squatting. Yeah. Um, I feel it more in my here? Heart. Seven or eight? Uh, seven. No. Ah. But I do like a, and, and I always do a lighter set as well. So there, there was like, a, you do my kind of heavy set like last week. And then there's a set where I aim for like 15. 
sometimes do like a little rest pause or a drop set. So I've been, like I say, incorporating some of the stuff that we've discussed as well. But I don't in, in, film a lot. Yeah. And it's another thing too, uh, Milos, I think I may have mentioned this to you. When I when James was here, we did train legs. Um, mm -hmm. And we did mostly machine work. He was traveling, you know, during his off period, taking it easy. But I noted James's mechanics within the squat. Like his mechanics are completely flawless. And that's like, some people don't realize, like, as you said, James, it's like, you can't reinvent the wheel one squatting's not for everybody but if you can squat you got good technique you're able yeah. to safely do it there's no better exercise yeah and when i say squat like i you don't have to barbell squat of course there's the rogers pendulum that we used me and you i think that's an excellent um alternative because it allows you to get that same motion i just think squ squatting in general some manner i think is something that you shouldn't forego um personally just for quad development that's just my opinion but you know, if you've got an injury or something that prevents you from doing it, fair enough. But I think if you're healthy and you you like to bodybuild, Milos, I've seen Milos do some crazy squats. I've seen, you know, John Meadows used to do some good squats. And these are guys that had really good legs. So I don't think you should avoid them. Um, I don't know what you guys think, but I do think they're, I think they're necessary to a degree. I love squats. I love squats. When my quads are at the biggest, I was squatting 455 for 16, 17 reps, good reps. I loved it. I connected well with it. Everything's wonderful until my knee, and then it just becomes not worth it. But I love squats. Nothing gave me a better connection, really, to me and my quads than squats. Of course, lunges. Lunges for me just work so well as well for for a thigh, for quads. What's your take on that, Milos? I, I think it's a king of all exercises, seriously. I mean, uh, nothing replaces. I, I, I think that people start getting a little bit uh, sissier and start avoiding we can do the machines and all this stuff when we all know <clears> hardcore <throat> You know, true true uh, leg workout cannot be without the squats. Mm. Squats have to be there, and I and I love what you did. You pre-exhaust everything else. You warmed up, and then uh, you took away the possible injury. You know, to to, to the knees, as Chris is saying. But uh, Chris, if you can uh, bring back that video, I want people to analyze it. The way he did it, uh, it's uh, it's music. You know, uh, it's like symphony. He didn't do the power squat and just lift the fucking weight. Okay, you know, it's, it's a big difference when you just, okay, I have a seven plates on my, my back, I'm just gonna blast it. You know, so the only thing that you think is lifting, a, lifting that sucker off. What is it? What are you which, doing? which one is it, James? There's a bunch of squat ones. Which one did I just look at? Oh, the shit. one that is we it, just looked. I mean, is it, is it, is it, is it Don't change it on me now. It should be higher up, it should be higher up. <laughs> that one there with the, oh, with the brown t-shirt on the far right, that's why. It's because the uh, thumbnail. Oh, this one here. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so, you know, just put this, you can see that that weight is put on a quad. And then yeah, the, yeah, tempo, 100%. The, the tempo, I mean, he didn't rush it and blast it and lift the weight. He pushed it with the quads. Check it out, this. Okay. Mechanics forward. Look, look at that. Here. Not rushed. So you have a good quad, you know, squat. Not a whole body squat. That's exactly what I try to achieve. Like, I love that you say that because that's something I try to express to everybody. You can squat in many ways. The movement isn't the same. You have to be very specific with how you do it. And you have to tell yourself, what do I want from this movement? And there is a skill to it. I don't care what anyone says. There is certainly a skill to it. And you guys just kind of identified that. It's how you place tension through those quads and don't allow the whole body to become yeah, the moving yeah, yeah. factor, you know? Which, which brings to the good point of when people say... You know, I understand when people say the argument against squats for hypertrophy due to you have to control and balance the weight in a fatigue setting. You have to make sure your mechanics are correct as increased risk of injury. I get it. However, I do believe a lot of that does come from people squatting too heavy for what they're actually able to do by keeping it on the quads. Yeah, they're, they're completely hinging the, motion, the most movement on the hips. Like I've seen so many people squat, not like this. Well, they might start the first squat with the first rep like that, and then as they fatigue, their upper body's coming forward. They're relying more on your, their hips. They're starting to compensate. They're they're doing a little hip shift at the bottom, which obviously runs into a high risk of danger, but they're training too heavy. They can't move weight like James that. Define it exactly. What do you want to accomplish? You just want to squat, or you want to stimulate the quads? And this is heavy weight, slow, eccentric, beautiful. And, and just slow enough concentric for me to see that there is no inertia, there is no momentum, there is no whole body thing. It is beautiful. I love it. And, and listen, 
even even uh, guest posing uh, uh, legs show that. But you know, talking about your physique now, what I've seen at the at a guest posing, right? Because again, I'm I'm constantly imagining what do I want to see? I want to see more pop here, right? Mm -hmm. So so the lats. <laughs> and I think I mentioned this before. Like a lot of pullovers, 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 right? I I want that. As Chris was saying, uh, as his science research and he, he knows the, the studies, the lengthened uh, position, right? To put the load on that lengthened. I love, I don't know if you ever tried, if I do the pullovers, I go in a completely lengthened position and then I hold mm. like 10 seconds in the first rep, nine, eight, seven, six, right? You can go, you can play with the tempo down slow and up slow, but, but at this point, if I look as a coach, what I want to see, I, I want that when you do the the front out biceps and you can just pop the lats out mm. a little bit more. Yeah, sure. When I look at the, your front out biceps, I don't know. I, I, and look, I might be completely off. It's just like how I analyze it. It goes more into the biceps than into the lats. Yeah, for sure. I agree. And I can feel that. And that's, I, I specifically know that when I've had periods of training where I spend more time stretching, mm -hmm. they improves the pose. So it's the fact that you say that there, it makes a lot of sense because opening up is what you need to ultimately do, isn't it? It's opening up. And yeah, if you're yeah, yeah, yeah. not if you're not in that stretched position, you will remain you're you're selling yourself short really on the, yeah. some of the size that you can occupy. Like you could definitely, like you say there, the elbows could get back, the lats could pop forward, yeah. the shoulders could sit down and back more for sure. I now uh, when you guys do pullovers, well both people, James, like what's your favorite variation of a pullover in Milos? What do you think people should be doing pullover wise as they get bigger? Sometimes, like you know, your range of motion becomes limited in regards to a narrow dumbbell. Do you ever recommend using like an easy bar or or a different variation of a pullover with a cable? <clears throat> yeah, I, I do all kinds of stuff, and I do from decline to the flat and a slightly incline. It, it doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. I would just focus on just lats, and then I say, okay, so if you can have a uh, slightly bent, almost straight, you know, there is, you know, you play with that and then grip, yeah. grip has to be most comfortable grip for you. So you're not sure. occupied with the, oh, I can't hold this shit. That's why Nautilus, uh, with the Dorian have a, that the yeah. pullover machine. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. You want to push just from here. So mm -hmm. the, the rest of the, uh, upper body, uh, upper arm, right. You know, sure. try to exclude it. But, you know, when you're pulling back, you know, so sometimes you pull back just this way. I want you to pull back and out. Yeah. You know, so I really want you to visualize. I want to expand this lat as much as you can and the rib cage. So when rib cage is out and lats are out, mm -hmm. that's when you're going to get the most V taper and growth. I don't know who was uh, one of the. Was it uh, maybe Milo? So you're you're saying this? You're saying as you come up, you're coming out. Uh, uh, no, f with the lats, you know. So so think of regardless of your arms, right? You know, try to feel stretching and pushing out the lats. Even yeah, yeah that uh, it looks like it. It looks like yeah. It. Versus mm -hmm. that popping mm -hmm. out. Yeah, that's it. It has to be. Let's every millimeter counts. Every mm -hmm. millimeter it go out. I've seen when I was too harsh. On uh, James seeing the the bad footage of the Arnold Classic UK, and I really didn't appreciate his conditioning, but uh, you know because I, I didn't see it, you know, because it was bad footage, you know. And uh, but I, I seen the last spread, like last spread goes, you know, all over the place. Woo! Like really, it goes there. He said, "Ooh, why he can't, you know, have the same pop in the front double in the other poses?" Mm. And you know how I, I said this to everybody. If I see it, any muscle in one pose, you can replicate in every pose. Yeah, it's just there in every, you've got to sort your pose out. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's there. We've seen it. Okay. Freeze it. I feel, I feel pullovers a lot as well. And I do do a variation of pullover every back session. Hmm? What, um, what, do you, what do you mainly do for pullovers, James? It, it really depends where I am, what gym I'm in. Like at John's gym, I know your friends of uh, Milos knows John from Muscleworks Bethnal Green. Yeah. Um, not Bethnal Green, uh, Orpington. Um, he has the actual Nautilus pullover there. Um, 
And then, but I do actually, I still really do like a cable if I'm positioned right and get it in the right position because I just feel like you can get more stretch. Like you can set your stretch up. I, I'm quite flexible, to be honest. And I want to take that range as far as I can go and get as maximum stretch as possible. And with the cable, I feel like the first set, you might be a little bit short on range. But once you get warm, you can allow for more because you can, you know, you can move your body to suit. Um, obviously, you're not braced, so that's the downside. It would be nice to have your back on something or your chest on something to fight the force. That's why also like a lion dumbbell one is very good because you're, you're braced. So I'll try and put one variation in. Today I did the cable because I really feel that. Um, but I do think pullovers are definitely underappreciated by a lot of people now. I agree. About everyone, I agree. everyone now is just like, single arm, pull down this, single arm. Like they're trying to replicate <laughs> what you're going to get. They're trying to, yeah, but they're trying to replicate what you're going to get from a, a good pullover. So just do a okay. good pullover. Let me throw, uh, throw this at you. And I think Dorian, of course, did uh, pullovers every time. Jean-Pierre mm. Fuchs, who had one of the craziest backs, you remember? Oh, like, oh, and yeah, I, yeah. He would do the pullover uh, rows, pullover, pull, pull downs, uh, superset. So first you open and up, you know, mm, and go straight into the rows or straight into the... Uh, that's maybe kind of idea I, I, I would like you to try. We could, we could throw that in. Yeah, so to open up with a pullover and go straight into the And then into follow, and follow with a pull down. And then, you know, it, just to see, because you're pre exhausted already, but you opened up and you felt that stretching, you know? Hey. Yeah, and, and, and I think you'd certainly get a better connection as well. Like, you already kind of, I always say this, but it's like you put the tracer bullet in, and then every other bullet from that magazine hits the same spot because you've, you've located where you're trying to hit. <laughs> <laughs> do you I know, love do that. You know I mean? so, that's because great. that's what you, you know, you set that, okay, my lats, I can feel it. And then when you follow up with like a row or anything, you're like, oh shit, man, I can really feel it now. Trace your bullet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, okay. I think you'd appreciate it. Uh, uh, okay, so James, just observing you, this, this is what you did. You did you did it here, which is narrow, yeah. right? Okay, okay. So we got okay. to widen out. I, I want to, yeah. Oh. So every time you do it, it has to be like a second nature. What the hell? Up and out. I, what the hell? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> James, oh, how's, the, how's the protein <laughs> intake going? Yeah. Fine, I'm, I'm adjusted to it quite well. Like maybe a yeah. week or two ago, it was more of a challenge. But you, you like Miller said, I, I, to I me, didn't he said, hear it. Just I didn't hear it. it. Sorry. So I, I, had, I, yeah. I, I had to sneak in a protein question. Uh -huh. Yeah, he said, "How's the protein going?" I said, "It's good now." I said, "Like it took a couple of weeks to adjust, but you do." Like Milos messaged me and he said, "You'll adjust," and I did, and I have. Yeah. So, can I be scientifically uh, sufficient to say and prove my point? No. You know, so you so say you don't need, you don't need, you don't need. I just know from my experience and everybody that I ever work with, pushing a higher is better. Therefore, I start working with the James. Uh, we want to make a major impact, right? We want to put some, uh, you know, major muscles. So you, now you tell me if it's like $10 million sitting there, you know, that you can get if you make some, uh, you know, great impact. Am I better off with a higher protein or a lower? Okay. A so higher. it's no brainer yeah. right away. Higher, how much higher? It's okay. We're going step by step, step by step. But I promise you, I did this 500, 550. Nasser somebody, when he saw my journals, he said, you small punk. If you did that much, I'm going to have a 600. And then he said, he said, and expanded like you cannot believe. All right? Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, Chris, you, you're a coach also. Taking a James, who we both know, it's already pro champion, already have a you know, physique, already been there. But it's been doing a little bit less of protein, okay, for a while. For me, it's uh, right there. It's Let's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. It's, it? it's a no-brainer. Like like no yeah. It has yeah. to be. It's just now uh, how much more can we push it. So uh, as I told no. you, with, with uh, Samson, for example, yeah, when we exceeded the amount of food we can eat uh, in uh, protein uh, portion size, then, okay, we can reduce a little bit, but replaced with a little bit of protein powder with it so as i was just i was just going to ask that i was just going to ask like because a lot of listeners i'm sure have this issue and i hear this with my clients like oh dude this is so much chicken i have to eat so much chicken or they don't like egg whites and sometimes people don't or are not able to really think outside the box so like mm -hmm. james uh what strategies have you used to be able to adjust to this protein intake is there anything that you're like what you were doing wasn't working with that quantity, so you kind of changed the way you prepared it, or you're well, like, I have to cook chicken fresh every day. Like, what did you do? To... It's something I kind of discussed on, I did a little video on for the channel for the AMA, and it's like, I think when you get to that point, 
you, you, you have options, don't you? So Milos in his plan is like, I want lean protein. So either chicken or such and such. So if it's just a point of like, typically it's not the amount of food that's bothering you, it's the repetitive nature of the food. Let's be honest. Yeah, it's not 100%. because it's too much food. You can eat it. So if you're having a few days where chicken's just like really not filling it, why not just get the equivalent protein content from a good quality fish, so-and-so? So obviously you need to eat a bit more fish because there's less protein per gram um, if you actually look. But as long as you're like making up the same amount of fucking protein you're trying to achieve, then you have that variety. I would say another thing that's really good to keep on board as well, because like Mila said, if you've got to top up the protein from a, a, a powder of some sort, I would like to keep a good Pepto Pro on board because I know it's a really good quality protein. At the end of the day, it's a complete casein hydrosylate. Um, it digests well. And if you're just trying to make up 20 grams of your protein from a meal because you can't quite get in the full amount, better to do that than not to fucking do it at all. Because yeah. like I say, if, yeah. you can eat, if you're eating most of your meals and then you're really struggling, I don't want to go to bed and not hit my protein quota. And if I have to, I'll fucking drink it if I have to. But I try to avoid that if I can. Um, and I've been pretty good at not having to do that. But I would say, look, listen, don't, don't, everyone has the option to have a bag of Pepto Pro on the side. And if they're meant to hit 500 grams of protein a day, why go to bed 40 grams short if you could just put 40 grams of protein in and drink it and go to bed? That's, that's my advice. One yeah. million percent. And yeah. okay, even though a lot of experts, maybe you guys are going to disagree with this too. Because you shouldn't wake up in the middle of the night to, to drink it. But this is when I came to the States, I had a midnight three, six, nine, every three hours psh, alarm. I can't eat, I will just drink it. At midnight, I would drink my protein and go straight right back, you know, Funny. just to maintain that continuous influx of amino acids constantly. This was my thing. Now, of course, many experts say you're distur disrupting your, your sleep, it's not good, you know. So, but I, I did this with, with many, many people. Now, also, um, I probably never shared this with you. I did for a long time. You 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 would grind a kilo a pound of beef and a chicken and a turkey, right? And 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 throw in some egg whites and stuff and made the patties. So now all of a sudden you have a uh, four so different nice proteins. Food. Yeah, um, you know you, you make like a burger patty. Uh, burgers, burgers, basically. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. And uh, or or mix it with, with anything. I, I used to love that. And, and for me, again, when I'm thinking, I have a different structural amino acids, different absorption rate, it can only work, it's just pain in the ass. Mm. But, uh, you know, if you make good old, you know. Well, I'm kilos, not being funny, right? I'm not being funny. Who's ne who's not gonna be in the mood for a burrito? Like, yeah. everyone likes a burrito. So if, it works, if you're sick of eating like chicken and rice in its standard form, yeah. then grind your meat, put your rice in a wrap, because, you know, you can have the equivalent amount of carbs from rice in there with wrap. Make sure you get your protein in there, you can put a bit of salsa in there. That's palatable. So it's, it's half the time it's people being lazy and not making their food palatable as well. Yeah, yeah it's, and the thing is this, there's so many good wraps now. I mean, you can get wraps that are like 30, 60 grams of carbs per wrap. Gets, gets yeah. much it's it's either made with corn or rice or flour. Yeah. You can have your choices. One yeah. thing I used to do, I used to like is, uh, you know, obviously sometimes when you're trying to make sure you limit your fat intake and you are using lean ground beef and you have used beef already in the day, is I would do half beef, half egg whites and mix yeah. them all together with like cooked mushrooms. And then like, that just tastes so good. I can get that down so much, a little hot sauce on it. You know, I do that sometimes with salmon and egg whites. So I might have the, you know, half of my, because <clears throat> my breakfast is salmon in most of the time, but I'll have a certain amount of salmon and I'll buff up the rest from the egg whites. Yeah. So that I'm, you know, kind of keeping, yeah. I, yeah, I, I don't yeah, mind yeah. the fats from salmon obviously, but sometimes salmon's a funny one because I like to buy it pre-cooked and uh, poached. The amounts sometimes are a little bit shy of what I want. So that's where egg whites come into hand really perfectly because then you make up the additional protein from, you know, I just microwave some egg whites and I put it in my bread because I have a sandwich essentially for breakfast, which is great. Um, and I put the egg white in there as a second fill in with my sauerkraut and salmon. It's great. Sauerkraut. Yes. Yeah, sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. sauerkraut, yeah, which I like it. Oh. But what I, in that journal that I show you guys so many times, I ate bread as my favorite choice of carbs throughout my whole career you can see me a uh, week of the show i had it you know now that, you that, like you I like uh, uh sprouted grain bread non, non I, had a, I tell you i think it was a, a miss olympia 91. yeah you know the one that uh, uh bad francis was leading after the prejudging but then Lena murray you know managed to to beat her afterwards and it was like kind of expo and there was a vogel bread v-o-g-e-l oh, that's the, that's really good that, that is fucking like amazing that. They sell that around the corner from me, Milos. Yeah, I'm telling you. Is, so, is that, I don't have a that, is 
I would have a four uh, slices, you know, for every breakfast, and then I would probably throw in, you know, wow. as a choice of fries. Because when I look, I, I need my like, you know, 60, 80 grams of carbs here. I, I don't feel like uh, rice. I don't feel like a goddamn um, My mind's blown how that makes so much sense because when I've eaten that bread compared to any other bread, I kid you not, it's like the bee's knees. It's the shit. It's brilliant. And now you've just said that, and it's such a specific name. They literally said it around the corner. It's got like green writing. It says Vogel, uh, Vogel, whatever it is. It's brilliant. Do uh, they sell this in the United States? Yeah. Okay. That's it. That is the brand. Yeah, 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 green yeah, writing. yeah but that, that's the one for sure. For sure. Yeah. You just like, you know, that was 1991. So 30 years ago, I guess they changed the label a little bit. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, such good stuff. Uh, I, we yeah. need a sponsor for the channel from Vogel. I was. Uh, <laughs> James, this I was is having a mixed grain. Fun. Okay. Original yeah. mixed grain. Okay, right there. Mid this one, they do, they do, they do many, many ones. It's uh, really good. Oh, they have too many. Yeah. Milos, I'm going to reach out to Vogel and say that Milos Arsev uh, has uh, is a I probably had them more than anybody <laughs> alive that didn't have that much Vogel like I had. You, you already stuff. know that it's a good European bread because they have the 100 gram servings on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah but, uh, here are two slices. But yeah, it's, it's imagine, an amazing bread. Yeah, two slices, 25. Four slices, 50. It's like nothing. It's, oh, you shouldn't be eating bread. Uh, says who? Who says that? I mean, but, but this is that idiotic thing. Just like James right now said, who wouldn't want to have a good burrito? Okay? So, oh, the, the, it's something on your diet. What, what do you mean it's not on your diet? Or good sushi. I mean, if you have a tuna and, uh, and salmon and, you know, yeah. uh, we have that sushi place that we did, we did this much rice, I'm, I'm telling you. You know, if you guys come to Vegas, I'll take you. I uh, it's it's my treat. Um, I took Chris Cormier and Daniel James. Uh, I mean, the reason why I competed 110 times, I didn't suffer in my diet. Yeah, you, I you, ate the things I love eating. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. have to, like, you know, change a little bit. Because you're like a savage. <laughs> Man. 100 and how many shows? 110. 100. It's crazy. Yeah. But, that's a lot of shows man. I'm that's bummed that shows. I didn't do 100 pro shows that was my original plan but then yeah. uh, you know as you know I get to suspended goddamn, for three years <laughs> I, I looked up yeah. I looked up Vogel bread on Amazon to see if they had it and that's a huge that's a no oh well I'm lucky because it's around the corner in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it matters <laughs> yeah this is I mean uh, Milos have you seen Vogel bread in Vegas no for, for a long time that's why I'm, I'm, I'm quite shocked I'm going to do some Google search myself right now. I see it in the UK. It's in the UK well, everywhere. Chris, now Amazon you know, has it in the UK. You, you know when you're over, your bread yeah. needs are covered. Yeah. Dude, so. James, when I come to when I come to visit you, I'm going to bring an extra suitcase and fill it with Volga bread. Freeze, freeze a load and take it home. Yeah, man. <laughs> I don't blame you. Uh, James, were you ever big on egg whites? Yeah, I quite like egg whites. I'm, I'm a fan of them. I, I They sell them here, you know, in the kind of bowl format i used to do the whole crack an egg but yeah. i find i seem to get on fine with these, these i used other to crack ones the well. egg too you know yeah. uh, actually the that was my serbian phone and my mom called me so i have to call her afterwards but she came and she was watching me um crack the eggs and then i throw away like 15 egg yolks every single yeah. time and they're like, such a waste <laughs> yeah <laughs> such a waste so she's she tried to use this for something else baking uh, stuff didn't like, work. yeah yeah but uh I did four times 15 a day, 60 egg whites. Oh, it yeah. used to take forever to crack like 15, 20 eggs. I loved it. I was the master of it. You know, let me tell you, I could, with my eyes closed, I could, and, oh, I'm Serbian. You don't waste a one gram of protein, you know, you have to. Yeah, like, you get that egg white out there. <laughs> yeah. There's no drips left. Did I know it's because like, Samson's just... an old school guy. Samson's a go to the macro, which is kind of like Costco, and just get the whole, whole eggs. He's a cracker. You know. Is yeah. he? Yeah, I'm a, I'm I'm an egg white liquid guy now because they have so yeah, many available. But there is something. There's definitely um a, an art and like a you know when you're like paying homage to bodybuilding for what it yeah. is and should be. Cracking an egg certainly a way to like really feel like you're still a bodybuilder for sure. Well, also the egg whites when you freshly separate them are fluffier they than are nicer. the egg whites in the carton. They, they are better. The other ones are like pasteurized yeah. and like uh, played we, around we, with. We, we all got spoiled. Let's let's. Oh. Face it. Dude, yeah. that used to, but Milos cracking them back and forth, that's still a good amount. Did you used to just crack that, crack the egg, go back and forth until it falls out, or did you like yeah, put them in the yeah, bowl? Yeah, and yeah. Back and forth. Of course, you have to. Because if you do this one time, you lose at least two, three. Hey, 
I would not lose a one. You know how one extra large egg white should be like three and a half or four mm -hmm. grams of protein. You know. Yeah. So oh, 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 if I if I waste anything, like no, 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 no. And I would always underestimate the protein, overestimate the carbs, right? So if I'm mm -hmm. not sure I'm eating enough protein, you know, like it is my 50 grams, I would have a little bit more. And then, you know, for granted, uh, for carbs, because I was high carb either anyway, but uh, you didn't want to overdo it. So I, I would kind of overestimate them, like maybe, you know, say that it's more than is there. Did There's you guys ever... I want to say about egg whites really quickly, because I, now it's taking me back. I used to catch the yolk in my hand and like have this filter system through my fingers. <laughs> there was like a way that if I wanted that last bit of white off of the yolk, because you know, sometimes it attaches. You remember yeah, but like yolk? But I used to catch it like that. The yolk. Yeah, no, then I just used to throw the yolk back in. But yeah, there was this little, like, I used to sieve it with my hands. I yeah. basically did that with my hands. That was what I used to do. Oh, Look at that thing. That's, that's yeah, fancy. That's high tech. I didn't, I didn't have that one. I, I yeah, actually I had it. It, it. it takes away, it takes 100% of the egg white out. You can get that for Samson. <laughs> you just, you yeah, drop the yolk in good, it. That would be a good Christmas present. And you just turn yeah. it and all the white will come out. 349. All right. Yeah, that's, 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 on, that's on the reason why I'm also saying this. Jay Cutler was huge on egg whites. And it, when I think about it, it's so easy to, to eat. I mean, okay, Regan, for example, is uh, allergic to it. So I can't even use it. Oh, that sucks. That sucks. I love eggs. I yeah, love so. eggs. Well, uh, I, I don't know if you catch this. Um, he said 120, uh, Jay Cutler. There is 120 a day. Wow. So, uh, come on, man, now. You know, I like to exaggerate the things, <laughs> but you just doubled it, you know. Yeah. Funny, that. funny. Yeah. It's um, almost well, like there'd be no room for any other proteins, like if you're doing 120 eggs a day. I, like, I, get, I, I get, I get like, you know, when people were like, oh, I'm having a difficult time finishing these egg whites in the morning. And then you kind of like look at their breakdown. That's like, you're only eating 200 grams of egg whites and two whole eggs. I'm like, I can eat 500 grams of egg yeah. whites. No yeah. problem. Yeah. No problem. Easy. Especially if they're scrambled, man. Yeah. So mushrooms, good. peppers in there. Oh, mushroom peppers, a little bit of like... Um, Hot like sauce. That. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, but, but seriously, okay, now uh, I'm going to throw in some, some names. Uh, Thierry Pastel, Serge Nubre, you know, uh, John Brown. I don't know if mm. you... I mean, they, they didn't diet for the show. They were eating what they're eating all year round, you know, not watching, okay, I'm hungry, I eat, and then I train, and I burn. Mm. And that's how they were going. I, I was shocked. I've seen uh, Thierry Pastel in one of those European tours, and I'm just looking at him, he's getting buffet. I mean, <laughs> everything that is, no, 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 okay, if you are super depleted and you want to, like, junk load for one day, no, every single meal, he was wow. like, what the hell? And then he was putting, like, so much salt on top of it, right? And that was at a time, like early 90s, remember, when, you know, oh, salt was like so evil, you know, you should, mm. you should cut it out like way too soon, right? He's like, God damn. So like, Sonny Schmidt and myself, is like, okay, okay, Thierry Pastel is going to be spilled over. He, he, he comes on the stage ripped dry, yeah. like full. Yeah, damn. okay, next show, next show. We, we'll catch him on the next show. There was no catching Thierry Pastel. But uh, John Brown. One time we were in some photo shoot in Florida and all this stuff, and yeah, he, he's super hungry. I said, you know, we have something. I, I have like a, a Matrix bar, which I thought was great. You know, that's like ninety two three. You know, so you know how the now the the advanced a little bit, but back then that was like super good bar. You know, and he was so hungry, and he got the first bite, and then and then he spit it out. Like what the hell? He never took anything diet in his life. Wow. So when I competed with John Brown also, my pro debut was uh, his last show in IVB, uh, San Jose. I see him in the uh, breakfast room eating burgers, fries, and then for breakfast, he got the cheesecake. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. Dairy. I, I think, yeah. I think <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure, this, I might be wrong, but I think J.D. Dwadu was similar. Yeah. Because Bethnal Green Muscle Works is where they all used to train. Obviously, all the big 90s boys, Eddie Abu, um, uh, Ian Wadley, all those guys. And there was a calf underneath it. And I, I seem to remember JD notoriously being in there every day having food, from my understanding. So 
it's a 90s thing <laughs> from some of the guys from England because obviously uh, Brown's from uh, England as well, isn't he? So maybe it's uh, maybe it's something they was doing over here. I don't know, but to get away with that, you're quite lucky because I know I can get away with that. Imagine the expenditure you would need in order to like even get through that food. I would have to like train three times a day to even warrant that. Yeah, yeah. Or but, the uh, effects of like just cheesecake, sugar, and dairy. You'd feel shit. You'd be like, oh god. Yeah, yeah. You would feel like you're. But, but like drunk. I said, and this is down the line. I mean, uh, uh, James, I don't know if you heard me. Up until like '99, I was kind of keeping my shape and size, and and uh, carb loading would be conservative. You know, you you set your okay, one thousand. 200 maybe 1500 grams of carbs per day all that stuff for 99 after i placed 10th at the olympia but i already signed up for a 99 european grand prix tour ronnie 99 if you remember what he looked like yeah. flex 99 kevin 99 nasser marcus rule De De oh, shit. yeah crazy it's yeah. like well i'm just gonna go there to be a stage decoration you know <laughs> to say you know what stage decoration <laughs> you know we, we call this you know some guys call each other like okay because you're not in the first call out and second call out right then you're just you know covering the the, the stage to so say you know what <laughs> i'm gonna just blow up and say you know let me get loose and yeah. i uh, for seven days straight i blew up so much and that's the time i beat marcus rule and, and uh, nasser or somebody and wow. i look just as big I mean, you know, so, and I was saying this to Chris before, because I know he's so uh, precise and, and uh, minded that, okay, I can get away with this, but I cannot get away with the, the other. Did you try to get away with the other one? So, you know, for example, now you, James, you're exactly in that, that time zone, you know, to see how much we can get away with, yeah. okay? So now when we're planning, can we do a little bit more now? I, I don't want you to get uh, fat whatsoever, right? But one thing that I know, and that, that's uh, Chad Nichols back in the day was force feeding them and said, I want you to be a certain weight and hold that weight. Mm. You know, it's not like you go there and, and right away lose it. So like, okay, we should, you know, try to maintain it. You said 305, yeah. you know, next, next step is 310. Yeah, yeah, it'd be uh, good. Yeah. I've never managed to like really maintain a free ten, because I found normally when I get to that point is where like I'm like, Ugh. so it's now about willpower. But we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, but, but you, also, you know you're gonna I, be doing. I'm also I'm also in better shape at this weight now than I normally am at this weight. So that's a good start. But now you're walking also, right? You, you yeah, I walk. I move. Moving is so key. Like just being in Sweden for the last few like the last week. The moving is what keeps my appetite like really good. Yeah. Like and, incredibly good. It's funny you say that. And I always have to have this conversation with my clients in the off season when I'm like, hey man, like what are you doing all day long? And they're like, oh, I'm a desk job. And then I kind of go home and I kind of sit in the couch. I'm like, dude, you got to move. You got to move yeah. around. You can't like, you're getting heavier. You're eating all this food and you're being completely sedentary. That's not going to work. Like it's the fastest way to bottleneck your progress. Yeah, you, I you've got to move. Personally, if yeah. there's one bit of advice I would say is that if you're really trying to push for new muscle, then don't be a lazy shit and sit on your ass. Move. Yeah. Because because you're not like, it's moving, you don't expend more than you're consuming. It just allows for digestion to be much better and also blood, like your blood sugar feels better because you're not just sitting around. Yeah. Like if but I do sit blood, around, I'm sorry. Yeah. All the blood circulating, yeah. you know, yeah. moving around. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're building the gym, right? You know, so yeah, but I'm, I'm not touching anything. So I'm sorry, you know? Go on, guys, you do that. Oh, <laughs> dude, good. you definitely don't want to do that. No, 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 no. no, no. That's I do move, move, you know, I, 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 yeah, I make sure I, um, in the day, you know, go out, walk, go and get a coffee somewhere, or just make sure I have something to do that involves walking. Oh my god, dude, that's major. Just think about the injury waiting to happen. Imagine carrying like dumbbells oh, from five pounds oh, to two hundred pounds, like down yeah, steps. No, no. Yeah, that's a hard no. no. Okay, so now again, here's a opportunity for coach client interaction. Okay, so James, even though we are so far away from uh, Arnold Classic, well, relatively speaking, you know, because it's uh, actually around the corner, but it's, uh, scary, I, I would, also. you know, because you've heard this many times, but you, you hear, you listen, but you don't really hear it. Posing, 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 posing. So why would you pose right now, right? Like you are, you're maybe not as lean, and so you don't need to see. Uh, no, no, no. 
posing in sense of becoming so familiar with the movement and being comfortable and popping the lats out. Okay, so right now, you know, you can, you can pose in your, in your T-shirt, right? Mm -hmm. But when you do that frontal biceps, pop them out. Last spread, width, 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 width. Your legs are phenomenal from every angle, front, side, back, okay? Uh, I, I love that what you have here, right? But I, I'm also thinking when we expand the back, you probably expand the ribcage and your chest is going to peel up more. Mm. You know? just, just, just the way I see it. But repetition, 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 going into that side chest. That side chest that we just saw on your uh, Instagram is you know, phenomenal. But look, as phenomenal as it is, I'm going to tell you this. It can always be better. You ask yourself, can I do anything else to make this even, even, even better? I, I know that uh, IBB nice. they were telling uh, um, Samson. Quite a lot of twists that, now, don't they? What? They seem to want a bit more twist than they used to. No, no, no. no I was the, the guilty of twisting. <laughs> oh, but I feel <laughs> like that's they, what they've been asking. But, but they, they want more old fashioned chest up. Okay, right? some more like up chest. Yeah. So uh, even now. Check them out for the quarter turn? No, no, for side chest. For, for side chest. Okay. Side chest. You know, for me, of course, it was, it was logical. If I if if you see this, I'm just like this this wide. You're trying right? to show some thickness. And then now. if I go here, I'm so much wider. And yeah. I had to, you know, because I was next to Ronnie and, and Kevin yeah, and all these you know monsters. So I was yeah. cheating. But when you have a chest like James has, right? Or Samson has a great chest. Yeah. Turning, you're not gaining more than other guys that don't have a chest. Mm. And they cannot match you in a, you know, old fashioned side chest. And, and I think, you know, that, that uh, IBB is probably looking for more traditional old fashioned way. So that's I want to back do, up. Cause I've always, sorry, uh, just like, uh, that's good if they do. Cause I do like a side chest to be side on. That's so it's my backup for clarity. The mm -hmm. IBB now stated that they prefer side chest with, their, with a chest up. Chest that's up, good to know. Yeah. Versus yeah. what? Not this, not my Where thing. people turn more and like shoulder yeah. down kind of thing. Okay. You know, like a lot, of, a lot of people used to kind of do this. Yeah, so they're, they're, yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's me, James. <laughs> so yeah. they want, they want more of this. Yeah, but listen. So even what I was, chest versus, is much up. This. Okay, touch, touch your chin. You chin, know. Chris, yeah. right up there. Wow. Yeah, right there. <laughs> uh, I'm serious. Yeah. That's okay, and, and then, yeah, that, that's about it. But uh, uh, Chris and James and everybody listening, be the chest, right? It's side chest pose. You have to, in your mind, become the chest. And you want to just be as big, as wide, as full, as uh, expanded, you know, this kind of thing. Because uh, think chest first, and then everything else is falling into the picture. But when you think of moving and shoulders and everything else, it's different. So... Yes. Biceps, be the biceps, be the be the legs, be the, be the whatever. Your your legs, I mean, I'm blown away. And and let me tell you, continue training like this, and let's make them even bigger. You know, oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Oh my god, absolutely. It's not oh my, it's, you know, yes. I don't need it. Yes, if you. Oh can, yeah, for you... sure. This is a muscle yeah. contest. Fucking a. So w one quick question towards the end, uh, as before we end, is as you've gotten bigger. Uh, is there any sort of exercises that you can really no longer comfortably do? Or because of your mechanics, you've been able to still continue to do all of them? I'm, I'm comfortable with everything, to be fair. Yeah. That's I, awesome. I'm, I'm very comfortable. So that's the good thing, actually. And I, I'm, I've am i always reasoned, like, been reasonably mobile for like a, even for a heavier guy, I can do things and move around. So flexibility is not too bad. It could be better and I will work on it. But yeah, there's no exercise that I get into and I'm like, this doesn't feel good. I shouldn't do it. Um, well, James, yeah. I remember I remember rollerblading with you at the skate park at 285 yeah. pounds. Know, Milos, this dude on a skate, where me and this dude are at a skate park, and the next <laughs> oldest person is like 11. <laughs> I know, I know. We had a good time. And James is 285 pounds, but whipping around on skates, doing yeah, 285 sounds miserable. Oh my yeah. god! But yeah. dude, he can move. He's got athleticism. I think that athleticism genetically really but a lot uh, of helps you in bodybuilding they? more than people yeah. think. I think a lot of bodybuilders came into this from having some sort of desire for sport. So therefore our background kind of dictates that. Like Milos, I bet you you in your heyday, like back in the day you used to do some sort of sport or something. And I bet oh, you I mean this. it's it's a way of living. Of exactly. course. Soccer basketball in, in Serbia is absolute. Then I went yep. karate judo. 
Yeah. Obviously, you know, and then with that, you had some strength training, and that was—I uh, don't want to. And stop that's it, when you—that's when it—that's when it bleeds over, isn't it? It's the strength training becomes so fun, yeah, that it takes over what you were doing. That's what happened to me. Yeah, and, and not just that. I mean, uh, I, I told this to Chris before. I literally in Yugoslavia back in the day. Uh, that's like nineteen end of sixties and beginning of seventies, right? <laughs> that, I'm that old, you know. And uh, I've seen the pictures of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And it was just like, Jesus Christ, man physique can look like this. What the hell is he doing? So as soon as we start doing a, a weightlifting, that was it. You know, yeah. forget about the basketball and, you know, judo, anything. I just wanted to be a bodybuilder. I feel like that's something that on, a, on another time that we could definitely go into. Yeah. I know we're coming to an end now, but uh, it's interesting because I've come away from this podcast being 45 minutes and been like, I definitely want to talk more. So it's good. So we'll definitely, yeah. if you guys are happy to have me on again, I'd love to come back on again. James, we'd love so to have you back on again, dude. There's just so much things to discuss and good things. Let's do it on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> like, Let's do it again. Uh, well, yeah, I'm always yeah. available for this, this, you know, the, the team. So, And then yeah. real quick, one last question. James, you are doing Arnold Classic in America or UK? America first. Oh. And then I might as well do UK after because it's two weeks after. So, And it's right close to you. Yeah, and it's on my birthday, the UK one. Yeah, that's and, the one Lexi and I, and I are going to And I should have won. And I should have won it last year. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's no, but I will. I will be. I will be coming and taking my home title. I love it. Lexi and I are going to try to make that one. That's the one I want to go see. I okay. want to make a little that, trip out of it. Come see you. That'd be great time. Bianca. I think. Ron, I know that Ron Partlow is going to be over for that time. Um, oh, Ron's sweet, a good friend. So is this two some... weeks or one week after? I think it's two. I think it's two. Yeah, weeks. two. Yeah, for sure. I hope, hope it's that one week. That's stressful. No, it's two weeks because it's the one's right at the beginning of March, and then one's the seventh, sixteenth, and seventeenth, and the seventeenth yeah. is my birthday. So perfect. All right, James, man, it's awesome talking to you, buddy. Um, you too, guys. Hope, you too. Hope you and Yannick are doing well. Yeah, and, uh, and Milos. I will catch up with Milos at the weekend. I'll send him some updates because this yes. week I was in Sweden. So you I'll know, send you, some uh, I, I, you know, if you're not uh, three or seven or more, you know, don't bother. Don't bother. I, I literally, honestly, if I wake up on Saturday or whatever it is and I'm not 307, you won't even hear from me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Spend All another right. week working on it. All right, guys. That was really You're fun. You're holding a stack of nickel in your hands as you take a picture of the scale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, good times. Right, Thank guys. you, guys. Appreciate All right. You. Take care. Thank you. Yep. Hey, thanks for watching and supporting the channel. If you want us to continue to make great content, please hit the like button below and also subscribe. And did you also know we have an official website, ifbama.org, where you can check out a lot of all these episodes with deleted scenes, especially ones we cannot show on YouTube or any other platform. Comment below. If you have any questions or suggestions on how to make this show better, please, we would love to hear your feedback. Thanks again for watching IFBB AMA Podcast. We will see you guys next time.